God bless Haley Barber. Uh, we spent a long time on this show last night talking about the former Mississippi governor, former Republican Party chairman, uh, and his rosy recollections about the good work in his Mississippi hometown of a white supremacist group from the 1950s. Uh, that same group in its new white supremacist form appears to have been the group that inspired the shooter in the Charleston massacre last week. Well, today, Haley Barber uh, gave his opinion about the Mississippi state flag. That's the only state flag in the country that features the Confederate emblem right on it. Uh, the Republican Speaker of the House in Mississippi now says that the state of Mississippi should get rid of this flag, get rid of the Confederate emblem on its flag. But when former Governor Haley Barber was asked about it today, he said he is personally, personally not offended by the Confederate flag, or at least by the Confederate emblem on the Mississippi flag. He said it doesn't bother him. He added today, quote, while I was governor of Mississippi, Mississippi became the only state in the country to use state money, taxpayer money, to build a civil rights museum. They're expecting that uh, museum to open in uh, 2017. Right? So former Mississippi Governor Haley Barber is, says, says he's not offended by his state's partly Confederate flag, but he is very proud of its civil rights museum, and it's due to open in the next couple of years. Already they have been collecting artifacts for it, like, for example, the papers of Medgar Evers. Medgar Evers, the first leader of the Mississippi NAACP. Medgar Evers took on that exceedingly dangerous mission, boycotting local businesses, organizing sit-ins, investigating civil rights murders like the killing of young Emmett Till. In the middle of that work, Medgar Evers was murdered in 1963. He was shot to death outside his family home with his wife and his kids crouched for their own safety on the floor of the home. It took more than 30 years for them to convict the man who murdered Medgar Evers. In the meantime, his wife and children followed the many tens and hundreds of thousands of African Americans who fled the South and who fled Mississippi in particular. His widow, Merle Evers, became a respected voice for equality in her own right. And although she stayed away from Mississippi for a long time, a couple of years ago, she moved back. Uh, Merle Evers became a visiting scholar at a local black university in Mississippi. She also, you may remember, delivered the invocation at President Obama's second inauguration. And she has helped put together the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum, which will house not just the papers of her late husband, those papers which she donated, that museum will also house the gun that was used to end his life. In 2013, Merle Evers spoke at the groundbreaking for that Civil Rights Museum. But look at what else happened uh, at that event. Not at the time she was speaking, when she was just listening to what else was going on that day. You can see, look at this photo. You can see the current governor, Phil Bryant, speaking at the podium. And way back there in the other part of the picture there, that's Merle Evers, the woman they call the permanent first lady of Mississippi. But covering her, right, obscuring her with its golden fringe is the Mississippi state flag with the giant Confederate emblem right up there in the upper left-hand quadrant. What must it be like to be Merle Evers, right, sitting on that stage with that Confederate flag flying over the proceedings? And now today, with these new and newly urgent calls for Mississippi to finally get rid of that flag, what must it be like to be her of all people today? Joining us now for the interview is Merle Evers. She is chairman of the Medgar and Merle Evers Institute. We're also joined by Jerry Mitchell, uh, who's an esteemed investigative reporter for the Jackson, Mississippi Clarion Ledger. Thank you both so much for being here tonight. It's a real honor to have you both here. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Evers, I'll start with you, ma'am, if you don't mind. What do you make of this, this change uh, going on in your state now where there's suddenly all this new energy for changing the flag and getting rid of that Confederate emblem? Well, quite honestly, I was surprised that um, uh, the leaders uh, of Mississippi uh, made the statements that they did, uh, the willingness to uh, remove that flag. Uh, I think it goes on uh, to say, in a sense, that um, change can happen at any time, at any place. Um, I was surprised. I'm still surprised. But uh, it really depends on what happens after that. Uh, and what is happening today, and I'm deeply afraid that we are still, as a country, uh, mired in prejudice and racism. And I think the incidents that have happened over the last few days point exactly to that. 
it's unnerving um, to have to think back and relive all of the pain and the suffering, not only of my family, but of uh, so many other families, not only in Mississippi, throughout the South, and actually throughout the nation. And I have to ask the question, really how far have we come? That was the question that was asked uh, years ago, how far? It's still a point that needs to be honestly explored uh, and answered. And I must say to you that I am so disturbed by what uh, has been happening in these last uh, few days. I'm, I'm, I'm horrified, horrified at the fact that one of the largest newspapers in this country, the Wall Street Journal, had a series of articles and those articles each time call that young man who killed the people in the church, Mr. They addressed him as Mr. throughout that article, and they have done it again and again. And we're looking at a paper that impacts millions of people, not only here, but across uh, the country as well. I'm horrified with it. I'm angry with it because people don't realize what one subtle thing can do to take us back years, to roll back all of the advances that we have made. And I think I have kind of set myself up uh, as a person to critique those things. Mm -hmm. And I must admit, I am still angry. Uh, I, I could not say that a couple of weeks ago. But I can say it today honestly, and that's why I work so hard to try to see that justice prevails, not only as it did in my husband's death, and I'm sitting next to a, a dear friend, uh, Jerry Mitchell, who worked endlessly with me to see that justice prevailed, and it took years for it to happen. So people say to me, well now, aren't you satisfied with the progress we've made? And my answer is absolutely no because we still have so much to do to correct the ills of our society. Ms. Evers, I actually want to direct one question to Mr. Mitchell, who's there with you, Jerry Mitchell from the Clarion Ledger. Um, Jerry, when you look at these calls that are being made in Mississippi, in particular from uh, Republican leadership in the state legislature, that the Confederate emblem should go from the flag, uh, does that... Does that make it seem to you like there's enough momentum that it might actually happen, that that major change might happen in the state? Or do you feel like this is a long fight that's just at the beginning that still has an unpredictable outcome? It, it, it's a little early to be able to tell. And I, I think, as, as uh, Ms. Evers has mentioned, that you know, we've had uh, some indications that we, I didn't anticipate this, to be honest with you, even in the wake of Charleston, that, that certain leaders would step mm -hmm. up in Mississippi, Republican leaders, and say this. This is the first uh, statewide Republican leaders that, that I'm aware of who've actually stood up and, and, and called for this. Uh, there have been others, in, in, you know, um, not in state positions, but, um, but yes, it's early, and we're just going to have to see how this all kind of shakes out. You know, after the, you know, this is two or three or four months later, uh, when, or when the legislature comes back to meet, which will be in January, unless there's a special session, how will they feel then? Mm. Will there still be this momentum to really try and fix it? But it is a fascinating thing. I, th I, I think, and the other thing is kind of interesting detail on this to me, is those that have called for this, interestingly, have invoked their faith. And I find that interesting, that, that the, those who have called for the change of the flag, almost every one of them, has invoked their faith, saying, you know, because of my faith, I really believe this is uh, an emblem that, that needs to come down. Uh, Ms. Evers, I just wanted to ask you one question that maybe you are more qualified to answer than uh, almost anybody else I can think of. And I'm, I'm thinking about the families of those people who died in the church in Charleston. Right now they're mm -hmm. seeing the deaths of their family members and their loved ones become a catalyst potentially for pretty significant change throughout the South and throughout parts of the whole country. The idea that major change comes from personal tragedy, from murder and loss. It's one thing for us to see it from the outside. It's another thing for the family members of the people who were lost to be experiencing that too. Do you have any advice or any insight for them in terms of how to manage what they're in the middle of now? 
You know, um, I have nothing but admiration and respect uh, for those uh, family members who have been impacted by this dastardly deed. Um, I had to ask myself the question, could I have done the same thing? Um, I'm afraid not. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to admit that. Uh, I was angry, hurt, revengeful, so many other things that, that, that are kind of on the negative side of this. But we saw Medgar ever shot down at our doorstep. The three little children watching their father die. The long fight that Jerry Mitchell and I had to see that um, justice prevailed. Uh, how many trials, Jerry, were there? Three. Uh, three. Um, I have found that I still have bitterness. I'm not proud of it, mm -hmm. but it's a fact. And that's one of the reasons I have worked so hard in so many arenas to try to see that justice prevails. I recall in the 90s when churches were being uh, burned, particularly in North Carolina, South Carolina. I was at that time head of the NAACP, and we went from one community to another looking at the ashes of those churches that had been burned. I have nothing but admiration, love, and hope for the people who suffered the loss of their friends and relatives uh, at this shootout and how they have come together and how they have prayed for those who hurt them. I don't think I'm that strong. Mm. Uh, after all of these years, I have tried to move forward, in which I have, but I have just been so incensed there were these last couple of days of how the media, particularly Wall Street Journal, has handled this. It's a, it's a slap to everyone who has given one way or the other in the movement. And I might add, the President of the United States had every right to use the word that he used in his speech today. I believe it was. So, you know, we, we, we go through these changes. We hope for the best. We continue to work. We see the buildings being torn down. We see our young people in the streets going wild. There has to be a better way. And I have to say to myself, back off from the anger and continue to work for peace and understanding. Merle Evers, uh, True Life Civil Rights Hero, uh, reporter Jerry Mitchell of the Jackson Clarion Ledger. It's a real honor having you both here tonight. Thank you both so much for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. We've got lots more to come tonight. Please do stay with us.